Alright, scenario. First round of the game and everything is on the line. You're in a 1v1 with the whole squad is counting on you to clutch up. You swing and... Oh. If this has ever been you, then this is the perfect video to get your aim exactly where it needs to be to dominate every single player. We're going to run through every element of aiming to teach you all the skills you'll need. Kicking off the list with where everybody starts, sensitivity. Now we've all had a sensitivity crisis at one point or another, but it really is as simple as picking a sense and sticking to it. Think about your playstyle and base your choice off that. If you're an entry player, you might want a higher sense because you're constantly flicking around to new angles. Maybe some support players would prefer a lower sense to keep everything about their play steady at all times but at the end of the day you can make anything work as long as you put in that practice and consistency now along with sensitivity i truly believe that a good mouse and mouse pad is one of the key factors in developing good aim and just because i say high quality doesn't mean that it has to be the most expensive there are so many budget products that pros will still use to this day before choosing a mouse you need to understand your grip style the three you need to know is claw fingertip and palm grip now don't worry if your grip doesn't look exactly like one of these pictures there are tons of hybrids to each grip, but when you look into mice, try to find one that will suit your style. As for recommendations, if you're looking for a safe shape, you can try the G Pro Superlight. For claw grip, you can look into Lamzu Atlantis, and for fingertip, most small mice will do the trick. If you really are on a budget and can get over having a wire in 2023, check out the Razer Viper Mini, which still holds its own so many years after release. On top of the mouse, I can't stress how important a good mouse pad really is. If you're still playing on your old Magic the Gathering playmat, something needs to change. For a game like CS2, a control pad usually is the way to go. Something like the Steel Series QCK and the Zowie GSR will be the trick for a cheap price. But if you want a top control pad on the market, the Artisan Zero is hands down the best option. Now bear with me here, we're just about done talking about peripherals. But really quick, we gotta talk about monitor choice. Now at this point in gaming, it's pretty much been proven that playing on 60Hz is a massive disadvantage, probably even more important than having a good mouse. Getting up to 144Hz will feel incredibly smooth, deny any extra input lag and help you react a thousand times faster to the enemy than you could before. I also heard that hitting that subscribe button looks pretty clean on high hertz. Now that the mouse situation is out of the way, we can talk about the actual aiming itself. Now first we gotta talk about crosshair placement. Now of course the boring part of crosshair placement is just learning to aim head level and focusing on not straying away from that. But once you have that under control, I have one tip and one tip only. Use your freaking brain. Every single fight you're gonna need to adjust your crosshair slightly different. Take a mental note of what the enemy knows and that is how you decide how to hold. If you're on an off angle that they won't expect, you should probably hold a little wider. If you're on a common angle, you should expect them to swing fully prepared for your location. As for clearing angles, it really is just playing each map over and over again, learning how the enemy will look every time you peek. Next on the list, we're going to talk about flicking. Now a flick is just moving your crosshair from one point to another in one extremely fast motion. And I know that everybody wants to hit those insane across your screen wrist-breaking flick shots that we see in highlight reels. But in a game like CS2, that isn't what we need to focus on. So when I say flicking, what I really mean is micro flicks. Think about it this way. Every time you see your favorite pro player hit a nice shot, it isn't usually the first flick that got them the kill. It's the micro adjustments that they made after the fact. The first flick is just a tool to get you as close as possible to your target, then you use your muscle memory and your previous practice to hit that crucial shot. You might be wondering how to improve at this. What you need to focus on is simply not rushing your flicks. I know it's hard, but do your best to not panic when an enemy surprises you. If your reaction is just flicking as fast as you can and mashing your left click, it's going to be very inconsistent. As for actual aim practice, stick around till the end of the video for the cheat code to godlike aim. Now next up, what every CS player seems to be scared of, we're gonna cover tracking. I don't know where the rumors came from that you don't need to have good tracking in a game like this, but they are 100% incorrect. Every time you shoot someone who's moving, you're tracking. Every time you're clearing angles, it requires some tracking. Every time you shoot a boom bot, you're tracking. Wait, wrong game. But you get the point. Without good tracking, your gameplay will look and feel sloppy, and it makes all parts of your play harder to control. The biggest mistake people make when trying to track is death gripping their mouse, holding it way too tight. All this will do is strain your wrist, making it harder to adjust and control your aim. So we went through flicking, tracking, and crosshair placement. The final piece of the puzzle is actually movement. When you think about aim, movement isn't really what comes to mind, especially in a game where it's hard to move and shoot. 
most of the time. But if you think about it, every movement you make, you need to counteract with your mouse to keep your crosshair in the same spot. This means that every movement leading up to the gunfight is crucial to hitting your shots. The biggest tip I can give is try not to use diagonal movements during gunfights. You already have to process so much that adding that extra factor when it's not needed makes things so much harder. When taking a gunfight that you have control of, try and focus on using only your A and D keys. I promise this will make you focus on your shots instead of tripping over yourself. And now that we've gone through all the elements of aiming, I'm going to show you some easy drills that will speed up the process, giving you those nice crispy headshots all the time. So unfortunately, CS2 doesn't have workshop maps integrated into the game yet, so we can't do the normal warm-up maps, but for now, we'll work with what we have. So the first drill will help with tracking and movement, and it'll teach you to be extremely consistent and smooth. What you're going to want to do is hit play, then select practice and deathmatch. Any map is fine, but I usually just run dust too. Once you're in, all you're going to do is run around and track each bot. Stay moving at all times and just try to keep your crosshair on the enemy's head. Try to move in different directions and try to make yourself uncomfortable with the movements. The more you do this, the better you feel and your mouse control will be super clean. If you don't feel like dealing with bots, you can pick a random object. Here I found this sign and I'm doing the same thing, trying to strafe around, keeping the crosshair as steady as possible inside the sign at all times. Doing these drills for 5-10 to 10 minutes before you play will help so much in the long run and it's a nice warm up. Now the second drill will be for micro flicks, so same thing as before load into a deathmatch and what most people do when they're trying to practice flicks is something like this. These are super unrealistic and they won't help your aim too much. First what you'll do is pick a spot on any wall and you want to do this slow at first to get used to the movement and learn what's actually happening. Like we talked about earlier, every big flick is just a tool to get you closer to what you're aiming at, setting you up for an easy micro flick. With each flick, stop your crosshair no matter how close you are to the target. Once you process that, you can hit a micro flick and shoot your target. It will feel weird at first but you will quickly get more comfortable. Keep doing this and you can slowly speed up as you go. Eventually it will look like a normal flick but you will be way more precise than before because you're not breaking your wrist, you're aiming with control. Now once you feel like you have this style down, you can start trying it versus actual character models. And again, this isn't ideal without a normal warm-up map but hopefully Valve will add workshop in soon. So same thing, big flicks as close as you can to the bot's head. Then go ahead and use micro flicks to hit the actual shot. Speed up as you go until it feels like you're fast enough for real gunfights. Lastly, if you're looking to do this in a more controlled environment without workshop, you can load up aim labs. Select six shot and do the exact same thing. Always remember that the goal isn't speed, it's precision. The speed will come on its own. And there we have it. I hope this video helps you out and prevents you from whiffing in front of your whole squad. If it did, make sure to hit that like and subscribe and comment what the hardest part of aiming is for you. Thanks so much for watching Full Force and we'll see you soon.